This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we are faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. I personally love therapy. I have noticed the biggest difference in myself from beginning therapy, and I know that other people around me say the same thing, whether it's about how I am as a person, I find that I'm so much more calm, but I'm also able to approach situations from a much more clear headspace. If you're thinking of starting therapy, I recommend giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tori today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Tori. Is hiring a challenge? Yes. But do I love a challenge? Also, yes. You need a hiring partner that can rise to the challenge, and that's why you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start now with a $75 sponsored job credit. To upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash manifest. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash manifest. Just to go to indeed.com slash manifest and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed hi guys welcome back to another episode of manifest with tori de simone i'm your host tori de simone and i am so excited for today's episode of manifest because it's different than any other episode that I've put out there, yet it's really along the same lines of everything that we've been talking about for years and years now since I started the podcast in 2019. I have really been toying around with what I want this podcast to be and the potential that it can turn into. And with that, I'm really excited about some of the episodes that I have planned and the direction that I really plan on taking this podcast and see it going. It's not going to be entirely like a 180 difference of the podcast that we all know and love, but I'm going to be adding on more things to it to make it more practicing of what we're preaching. And that kind of falls into the episode that I was discussing two episodes ago. That episode is um, titled Showing Up As Her. I'll have that link down below in the show notes of this episode, along with like so many other links and blog posts. And just like I talk about a lot of products in this too, without really meaning to, but I just kind of get into a bunch of different wellness tools and products that I've been using to kind of like elevate my, my learnings and whatever. I'll get into that later. Um, But I will have that episode showing up as her link down below, which essentially that episode was talking about practicing what you preach and showing up as a version of yourself that maybe you haven't met yet. And sometimes it's hard to identify as someone that we don't recognize ourselves. So if you put a label as, you know, her, and then you show up as her, but it's really yourself. That episode dives really deep into that, and it's one of my favorite episodes, so I will link it down below for you guys to go listen to. But today, we're going to be doing more of a practicing what we preach kind of episode and working on finding inner peace, but also just adding another layer onto that. So this episode is going to be a little bit of everything. We're going to do a little bit of breath work. We're going to do a little bit of journaling. We're going to do a little bit of personal reflections. We're going to be doing some takeaways. It's pretty much everything you guys know and love from the Manifest with Tori Moon podcast, but just a little more elevated. And I'm really curious if you guys are going to like this format of episodes or not. And if you do like this format, I would love to have these kind of episodes be like a bonus episode to where there's two episodes a week. One is like the normal episode that we're all used to. Um, Don't get me wrong. I love those episodes, but I've just been wanting, I don't want to fall into like the general wellness self-help podcast. I really want these podcasts to bring inspiration and happiness and purpose to your days or above anything else, companionship to your days. But I'd really love for there to be a takeaway with every episode, whether that be you just felt like you got off the phone call with a friend for the past 30 minutes, or whether it be you feel like you have 
rediscovered a new sense of self and you want to deepen that exploration within yourself, any way that I can guide that or any way that I could leave you feeling better than how you started this episode is a win for me. So anyway, if you guys like this kind of episode, please let me know. The best ways to let me know are on the YouTube channel or in my DMs. So my Instagram is at Tori Sterling underscore and the YouTube channel. I actually put this one on my main YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Tori D. Simone. Anyway, I'm rambling quite a bit in this intro. Today's episode is going to be a guided journaling session that's inspired from recent life events and passages from books that I've been reading. I've been practicing a lot of inner work and reading books with immense value and practicing yoga quite a bit. And it's been inspiring me to speak on what I'm learning exactly. I'm really in this moment right now where I just want to be a sponge in the wellness community and in philosophy, and I just want to learn so much. I touched on this a couple episodes back as well, but I feel like I'm just soaking in so much, and I kind of just want to regurgitate it almost on this podcast, and I feel like that's such a blessing of this podcast is having a platform to spread happiness and positivity, and maybe just one sentence that I say will encourage you to change your mindset or change a a thinking pattern or a behavior or something in your life. So in some of these teachings, these are some of the lessons that I've been learning and that I've just been wanting to share. So I hope this episode brings you peace or clarity or direction or companionship on your commute to work or to school. Before we dive into today's episode, I would also really appreciate it if you guys could leave a five-star review wherever you guys are listening to this, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, um, wherever you guys can leave a review. A five-star review and a written review helps the podcast grow so much. And also, if you guys could share this podcast on your story, it really helps the show so much. One other thing is you guys will notice that the physical manifest planner is currently off the website, and that's because I'm in the middle of relocating all the inventory for it. So I still have some inventory left, but um, I'm just relocating it. So while I'm moving the inventory, I have taken it off for sale on the website, but I know a lot of you guys are still asking to purchase the manifest planner. So I decided to do a little giveaway. So those of you guys that leave a review, a five star review and a written review and share the podcast on your story, tag me in it at Tori Sterling underscore so I can see the review and I can see the story. And then once I have all of those entries and reviews in, I will be sure to pick a winner next Monday, July 31st. And one of you guys will win a manifest planner. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we are faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. In this episode, I open up about a recent struggle that I've been going through when it came to a tragic death of a family friend. And I really thank therapy for being able to be a safe space for me to work through that and to really kind of conceptualize something that I've never really had to face so far. I personally love therapy. I have noticed the biggest difference in myself from beginning therapy, and I know that other people around me say the same thing, whether it's about how I am as a person, I find that I'm so much more calm, but I'm also able to approach situations from a much more clear headspace. I find that I have empathy for others, I really understand others, and I try my best to see everything from other people's point of view as well. If you're thinking of starting therapy, I recommend giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tori today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Tori. Is hiring a challenge? Yes. But do I love a challenge? Also, yes. You need a hiring partner that can rise to the challenge, and that's why you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. They streamline hiring with powerful tools that can find you matched candidates. With the instant match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment that they sponsor a job according to the Indeed Data US. One thing that I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring really easy because they have 
everything in one place. I put up a job of exactly what I'm looking for. And because of their instant match, I can find the right candidates for me. So I don't have to spend all these hours searching for people. It just shows up right away. And I always end up pulling from that pool of people that are chosen for me. And every single time they've been amazing. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for the applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start now with a $75 sponsored job credit. To upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash manifest. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com com slash manifest just to go to indeed.com slash manifest and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast indeed.com slash manifest terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed all right so let's begin but first i want us to all connect to our breath so if you're able to close your eyes and settle in roll your shoulders down and away maybe lift your chin a bit let your eyes just gently shut and take a nice deep breath in and a deep exhale and do that one more time just connecting with your breath here allowing your mind to wander not judging where the mind is going, but just simply observing, not attaching any emotions to the thoughts that are coming to service. Maybe you have a million things to do today, but the only thing that matters right here, right now, is this breath and in this moment. to be fully present whether your eyes are open or whether they're closed this moment right here is all that we are guaranteed and observing how the body feels how the breath feels maybe we feel little vibrations in our fingertips or our toes begin to flutter the eyes open and let's begin i have an excerpt from 101 essays that will change the way you think by brianna wiest and this one is chapter 23 it's on page 124 i'm using my kindle for those that are watching video um, this is a kindle paperwhite and yes i love it but this one is entitled everything is here to help you how intrinsically motivated people become the best version of themselves I've just taken a couple excerpts from this, so this is not the full essay. If you guys do want to read the full essay, I will link this book down below. It is incredible. So it says, the single most powerful, liberating thing any one of us can do is choose to believe that everything is here to help us. If you want to understand why you perceive your life the way you do, ask yourself what you think the point of it is. You either see yourself as a victim of what happens to you or as someone given opportunity to change, grow, see differently, and expand. You either see uncomfortable feelings as suffering you have to deal with or signals that you have to learn from. You either see the world as something makes you feel or you see your interpretation of the world as a projection of your feelings. The difference between the mindset, intrinsic, and the opposite, extrinsic, is whether or not we believe that we create our experience or that our experiences are created for us and imposed on us from an external force. We spend most of our lives being taught that the latter is true. When people believe that they are the victims, they forfeit their power. Do we know for certain that there is some higher plan in which we confront obstacles in order to grow? No, but we never will. What we do know is that people who are able to create happy lives for themselves right here and right now are the ones who think that way. None of us are guaranteed a happy life. If we want meaning, we have to create it. You will either sit in discomfort for the rest of your life, or you will grow and be better for the things that are most difficult. And it is very clear who does what. 
Now, sitting with this context, I kind of want to dive deeper into this. Alongside of these essays that I'm working through, I'm also reading the book, The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer, and it is an incredible, incredible book. I will also link it down below. And the beginning of this book discusses how our reality is made up from our subconscious. We view a million things every single day, but our reality is only what we internally comment on, that internal chatter, that voice inside of our mind that we all know what I'm talking about, the one that just like literally does not shut up. We all know that voice. It just comments on everything. That voice creates our reality. If a car crashes right in front of us, we are going to most likely internally comment on that car crash, and that car crash now becomes part of our reality. However, if we see the car crash, but we don't internally comment on it, it's almost as if it's never even happened, and therefore it's not even our reality. This is how someone can say something and we don't even hear it, or a cat can pass by and we don't even notice it, so it doesn't even seem like in our realm of reality. Like right now when I'm filming this episode on this windowsill, there's a bunch of rocks that my boyfriend collected and he put them up on this windowsill, and I see them every day, so I no longer have internalized conversations about the rocks and never think, oh, I remember the day that we went to go pick up those rocks, or I love that he left them there. I think it's so like cute and innocent and just very sweet. I now see them every single day, but I never internalize them. I never comment on it internally. So it's almost as if I'm not even seeing them, right? Because it's out of my reality at this point. So if we don't comment on something internally, it's almost as if it's never even happened. It's almost as if it's a different scope of reality. We see everything, but we only really see what we internalize and what we comment on. Knowing from this passage that I just read that we internalize our reality, how can we choose to create happiness and to create a life that we are proud of, to create a reality of ourselves from within that views the world as a bunch of opportunities rather than struggle and hardship? Have you ever had a friend that was just constantly complaining or just felt like the world was quite literally out to get them. Like everything out of their mouth was, woe is me. Nothing happens good for me in this world. And just everything bad happens to them. And then wouldn't you know it, everything bad does happen to them. They get a speeding ticket, then they drop their coffee, they stub their toe all within five minutes. Now we logically know that the world is not out to get this one person, right? But when that is your reality that you're feeding yourself, that internal chatter. It's that, oh my God, everything is working against me. That's what's going to begin to happen in your world. Your reality is that the world is out to get you, that there is a personal vendetta against you personally. And whether you've never felt this way, I'm sure maybe you know someone or know a couple of people that think of the world this way. They think that everything bad happens to them and good things happen to other people, but never to them. But we logically know that the world does not have a personal vendetta against you, even when things may seem or feel that way. Even when the world or the universe or your God or whatever it is that you believe in doesn't feel fair, it's most likely not fair, but that's because we're not promised a life without suffering, without hardships, without obstacles. But we are given the opportunities to grow. I recently had a family friend very tragically and very suddenly pass away, and it really affected me. I was incredibly sad and felt almost silly for feeling so sad because I didn't know him very well. I actually have only met him a few times, and he was one of my sister's friends. And he wasn't even someone that when I met him, he made like a lasting impact on me. He was just a young guy who you meet and then you just think you're going to see them again the next time you go to visit your sister. You just think that they're always going to be around. And about a month and a half ago, he passed very suddenly and very tragically. And I was really angry. The passing felt completely unfair. And I was mad about it. He was young. He was healthy. He was happy. He loved his life. He was so full of life. And for a tragic accident to happen and to take his life, I was really angry about it. And it was completely unfair. 
And as tragic as his death was, it put a reminder in my now daily life of how precious life is. And I hate that I even had something like that have to happen for me to have this moment of like, your life can be taken at any moment. It's so precious. It's so valuable. What am I doing complaining about small things? And I felt even more horrible because the week right before his passing, I was on this podcast saying how stressed out I was that I was busy. Like, are you kidding me? Like he would have done anything to have another day of being busy and and done anything to have another day of being stressed out. And here I am almost complaining about being busy. Like how, how, how dare I do that? So in such a tragic accident, it just puts such a huge reminder on my now daily life of how precious life is. And I'm mad that something this horrible had to happen in order for me to really be like, Tori, you need to get some perspective on your life. But man, did it put perspective on my life. Now, every single morning when I wake up, it is truly a gift. When we open our eyes every day, we're not guaranteed to go back to bed that night. But what a blessing it is that everything during the day happens to us. What a blessing it is to go back to bed at night. What a blessing it is to be alive. What a blessing it is to share this life with others. What a blessing it is to experience hardship so that we can feel immense joy. What a blessing it is to be aware of death so that we can fully experience life. While I'm incredibly sad and frankly angry about his passing, not a day goes by since where I'm not incredibly blessed for every moment of my life. And every single time I remind myself of how blessed I am, I always think of him. A few weeks later in yoga, after his passing, my teacher Jen put on a sound bite of a little girl explaining what living meant to her. And then she also put on another sound bite of an older man, probably in his 80s or 90s, explaining what living meant. And the young girl had such a beautiful innocence about the topic of living, and it was just so pure and relatable and, of course, childlike, but it was just so beautiful to listen to because we have all once been children and we all remember like the beautiful moments of just feeling alive when you're a kid. And she was explaining creativity and how living allows you to explore deeper into what you find beautiful. And the older man explained that living was a compilation of daily moments that we just take for granted. Waking up is a gift because the future is not guaranteed and the past is no longer relevant. The only moment that matters is the one that's right in front of us. And any obstacles that are put in our way are merely teachings. And while teachings don't always seem fair and they bring emotion, there's no weakness in emotions and there's no weakness in being angry at the unfairness of life, but no one said life would be fair. Those that rise to the occasion of life understand that they have one life, right? You understand you have one body, you have one mind, you have one soul, but the beautiful thing of this life is that you can change your mind at any moment If you're unhappy, you can do the inner work to become exactly who it is you want to become. You do not have to go down a deep spiritual path, but maybe it's something as simple as smiling when you're in traffic, because what a blessing it is to be stuck in traffic rather than be the accident that caused the traffic. Maybe it's wishing love to the person behind you in line because you understand that they're a human being just trying their best in this life, just like you. Maybe it's realizing that life isn't fair, but that you have just as much of a shot in this life as anyone else, that you can do anything you set your mind to if you believe the world is here for you to take full advantage of rather than to think the world is working against you. You can either choose to be a bystander in your life or you can watch it pass by with decisions and moments that you feel as though you have no control over, that you're just a passenger in your body. You're a passenger behind your face, just watching your life fold out in front of you. When the reality is you can take control of your life and you can create a life that you've only been able to dream of. 
So if you guys are going to journal during this episode, this is where I encourage you guys to pull out your journal. I will have a couple linked down below if you guys are looking for some of my favorite journals. And I also linked a couple of other goodies down below just to kind of like set the vibe, an oil diffuser, maybe a candle, a Philips Hue light. But I have three journal prompts that I want you guys to either think about or write down, or if you're busy, come back to this at another time when you've carved out maybe five or 10 minutes to think about these journal prompts. The first question is, what does a life I can only dream of look like? The next prompt, how do I want to view myself? And the last journal prompt is, what at one time was an obstacle that has now guided me to my current life path? So I want you to really think on those. I want you to journal about them and I want you to reflect on them and whether you choose to share those journal passages or keep them to yourself, really think about everything that we've talked about today and how can you create a life that you can only dream of. So for the rest of today, I just want to leave you with a few reminders. Number one, your reality is your perception. If you change your point of view, you can change your reality. Number two, Every moment is a blessing, so count your blessings. And number three, you are no different than those you admire, model, or maybe even envy. You can create a life beyond your wildest dreams if you believe you can. And I feel like through this episode, we've really created inner peace. And this is something that I talk a lot about with my yoga teachers and just from some other friends when I did a retreat back in February. We create this inner peace, right? Whether it be on this podcast or you take a retreat or you read a book or whatever it might be, you create inner peace in your life and then you are just bombarded with the outside world. So how do you keep the inner peace that you've created in the outside world? I have a couple tips. My number one tip is to stay off social media. It is so quick to disturb your inner peace and get that inner chatter going all over again, that inner chatter that I was talking about from the untethered soul. Social media just begins a narrative of judgment and comparison and disturbance. You've created an inner peace. You do not need to see the highlight reel or be exposed to the opinions of others at any point during today. So embrace your circle of peace, stay off social media, you will thank yourself. My second tip is to revisit your breath throughout the day. The breath is incredibly grounding and it allows yourself to be at peace in your body. And that's why I wanted to start the episode with that today, just to kind of bring you into this present moment. I also think oftentimes when we slow down our bodies, our brains tend to speed up and that inner chatter just starts to go really crazy, right? And we think of all these things that we have to do during the day, or we think of all the things that we could be doing instead of this very moment. But the only thing that we have is this very moment. So when we get to really recenter ourselves back with our breath, we're bringing ourselves back to reality, back to our perception of reality, I should say, and back into this present moment, which again is the only moment that we have guaranteed. I think a lot of people fear breath work or fear meditation or fear slowing down because we think a lot, right? Very natural. And we think that we're not good at breath work or we're not good at meditation because we are thinking. The way that you practice breath work, meditation, or just slowing down in general is by not attaching power to the thoughts that come to the surface. So even when a couple of minutes ago we did a breath work, I immediately started having the inner chatter in my brain go, who are you to be doing breath work? Like you don't know how to do breath work. And if I listened to that voice, I probably would have cut the segment out of the episode and just moved it right along. But instead I chose to acknowledge the thought, not have any judgment to the thought and just simply let it pass. And then my next thought was, this feels really nice. So that inner chatter is constantly going back and forth with itself to find a common neutral ground. So rather than judging it or giving any action or any attention to the thoughts, just observe the thoughts and remember that you don't have to put any power into the thoughts. So when you come back to your breath throughout the day, you've created this inner peace for yourself. You want to feel it again. You breathe. You start to get this little chatter in your mind. Eliminate the power that you give the thoughts. 
The thoughts don't need any power. You can just observe them. They don't mean anything. Just observe and continue to breathe. My third tip is to take breaks in your day to go outside and take a walk. This especially helps me get out of my head and get back into my perception of reality. If I'm on a walk, my perception of anything that's maybe brewing in my mind, any problems that I might be experiencing, any stresses from work or something I'm just like maybe thinking about a lot, it always just gets perspective and my problems just get so much smaller. My perception of the world grows and it grows more beautiful and I actually just become so much happier when I go outside for a walk. My fourth tip is to make a playlist of calming music that you can revisit. I've created a playlist on my Spotify that I will link down below for moments like this when I just want to feel at peace again. And these songs and sounds just remind me of inner peace. So it's a little mix of everything. I hope you enjoy it. I love it. And it just really brings me back to that post-practice feeling with an inner peace mindset. My next tip is to make sure that I'm regularly eating. When I get hungry, I get hangry and that really affects my inner peace and my perception of the world just becomes frantic. I get snappy. I feel like out of control. It's just like not a fun feeling. So I just like to always be fed or at like a very comfortable level of satiated. And I just find that that really helps me. I love fresh fruits and veggies to help with this, but really anything works. I think smoothies, especially now in the summer, are a really great go-to. My next tip is to be the example and the light for those around you. Energy is incredibly contagious, so I encourage you to spread the light instead of spreading the negativity. We all know the saying, misery loves company, but company also loves positivity. So be the light in your life and others. My next tip is to show empathy for others. Let's say someone screamed at you at Wawa, which if you're not from like the Philly, Jersey, I think even Florida has a couple Wawas. It's pretty much just like a gas station with a convenience store, but it's like somehow so much better than it sounds. I can't really explain it other than that, but let's just say someone screamed at you at Wawa. They must be having a really bad day and you were just that punching bag in that moment. Don't take it personally because it it could have been anyone standing right where you were. It was like right place, right time. And that person must have just needed a release. But rather than be angry at them, be grateful that it was on you that got that release as opposed to maybe someone who couldn't handle it in that moment and be grateful that it wasn't unleashed on someone that is really struggling. And maybe that was like the straw that broke the camel's back for them. Let's say you're driving and someone in front of you is driving really slow when it's just totally pissing you off. You have somewhere to be. Maybe they have a newborn baby and they're on their way home from the hospital for their first time with their newborn baby in the back. You just never know what someone is going through. So just show empathy for others. We're all human beings. We're all trying our best. Practice some empathy. It helps. And my last tip to remain in this inner peace that you've created for yourself in the existential physical world is to do one physical thing to revisit this feeling. Yoga is a really great physical practice of inner peace. Meditation is a really great practice of inner peace. But besides those two things, I also find drinking a green juice or sipping on tea really helps me revisit like the mental headspace in this physical world. Whenever I drink a green tea, it just makes me feel healthier. It makes me feel like I'm doing something really good for myself. And whenever I feel like I'm doing something really good for myself, it reminds me of these like wellness practices and teachings that I'm learning. It's a similar feeling, but I get it from two different experiences. So finding a parallel experience to revisit this headspace is really powerful. So guys, I want to thank you for tuning into this episode. It is different, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I really liked it. I feel like I'm just very aligned with this at the moment. And it just makes me feel really good. Um, I feel like the podcast lately, like I said, has been very wellness tippy, which is great. I love that stuff. It has great takeaways, but also on the day to day, like these are the, the conversations that I'm having with others and the conversations that I want to bring to light on the podcast. So I'd be very curious to know if you guys liked this format of episode. And if you do, I would love to release, like I said, maybe a couple more of these each week and have these kind of be like bonus episodes and then include like my normal, like more traditional paced episodes throughout the week as well. Either way, just definitely let me know. And the best way to let me know is on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Tori Sterling or on my Instagram at Tori Sterling underscore. 
Again, please remember to subscribe to this podcast and rate the show five stars. And if you could write a review and share it on your story, that definitely helps. But also if you tag me at Tori Sterling underscore so I can see the share, I'll also check that you guys write a review. Then I'll pick one person to win the manifest planner next Monday and I'll ship it out to you. You can also catch any links of anything that I talked about in today's episode or just learning a little bit more about this topic on my website, ToriDeSimone.com, or I have a link down below to a direct blog post. Have a great day and happy manifest Monday, guys. Bye.